Hey everybody, what's up? Stock market's up. I'll tell you that, another day of 100 plus point advance. Now, what I wanna do in this video is I wanna try to put everything into perspective, okay? I, I always talk about perspective and how important that is. So I'm gonna try to put this into perspective and you could take away from this whatever you wanna take away from it. You could agree with my perspective, you can disagree with my perspective, you could think I'm wrong, you could think I'm right. That's the beauty, is that we get to frame our thoughts the way we want to in our own minds, all right? So I mean, uh, that's part of staying rational and calm, is putting things in perspective, having the right framing. As human beings, we are prone to emotion and many times we cause ourselves to sabotage because we, you know, get all wired up in emotion and that affects our behavior, it affects our decisions. So it's very important to always try to stay rational. I understand that, that even the most um, trained person when it comes to mental game, myself, for example, you know, I, I'm prone to bouts of uh, emotion, uh, uh, you know, emotion as well. So got to try to keep that under control. But I'm going to I'm going to try to put this into perspective. OK, what we see happening in the stock market. Now, the stock market, the Dow is up 15 percent, almost in a straight line since the election. And as you know, I was very bullish going into the election. We had that long kind of slow sell off from August when the market topped out initially, uh, going down, going down, going down. And a lot of you who, you know, watch these videos, I remember very clearly uh, you were posting up stuff about how the stock market's finished and it's going to crash. And I stayed very bullish. The flows were very positive. Um, the, the, the Trump uh, fear, and, and remember, there was a tremendous amount of fear about the the prospect or the, the the likelihood of Trump possibly being elected. And that took us way down. Uh, and the night of the election, when it started to show on the early returns uh, from uh, the votes that he was starting to pull ahead, the market dropped. The Dow futures were down 800 points. We actually dropped down below 18,000 on the Dow. And then uh, the very next day, uh, it wasn't that bad. And, and the day, from the day after, it started. And we've been up 15%. A straight line advance. And in the recent couple of weeks, it's been up every single day. Every single day. Now, uh, this last part of this advance got started when he talked about his tax plan. Big, big tax plan. Big, big deal. Okay, And I've tried to break that down for you. Uh, I will go over it one more time. So the tax plan, the fiscal plan, basically breaks down like this from the sketchy details that we know so far. Number one, a corporate tax cut. All right, basically we'll be bringing the corporate tax rate down from current 35%, which nobody pays, down to 20%, which nobody pays either. The numbers are very clear on this. Uh, the, the corporations contribute $338 billion out of the $2.8 trillion that the federal government collected. So that equates to 12%. So basically a reduction to 20% uh, just uh, institutionalizes or puts into law a rate which corporations are either already paying, if not even paying less. OK, so I, I don't see any big impact from that uh, in the minds of people. Oh, that's a big thing, but they don't understand the numbers. And so in their mind, they have reacted to that already. All right. That's number one. Number two is the border adjustment tax, where Trump intends to tax imports and exempt uh, exports and foreign earnings. OK, so. What that boils down to, at least in the immediate, is basically a tax. And the reason for that is because we run trade deficits, which means uh, as a nation, we import more than we export. So the overall effect will be, uh, you know, when you tax imports and then you're exporting less, the overall effect, the net effect is a tax on the economy. 
Now, that might uh, switch around over time. I mean, we might become, as a result of that tax policy, an export-driven economy, but that's going to take time. That's not going to happen in a week or a month or even a year, okay? So the net effect of the border adjustment tax is a tax. So that's point number two. Uh, point number three was this uh, one-time, very favorable tax rate for repatriated uh, profits. And I've, I've been over this in the past as well. Uh, basically, repatriation of profits is another way of saying scaling back foreign operations. Companies keep retained earnings overseas because retained earnings are often used into growth and expansion and investment. If you're saying to companies, that, hey, bring that money back, you're basically saying bring that capital that you would have used for growth and expansion and investment overseas, bring it back here and we'll tax you at a, a lower rate. Now, uh, I'm skeptical that many companies are going to avail themselves of this simply because they would want to see um, an equivalent amount of demand here domestically for their goods and services in order to justify them saying, okay, we'll bring it back over here. So um, I don't see a big kicker from that. And by the way, uh, that repatriated money is part of the fourth, uh, I guess, prong of his plan, which he uh, anticipates using that money for the infrastructure investment. Now, he talked about a trillion dollar infrastructure plan. There's, it's just I don't see that happening with the money coming from this so-called repatriated profits. So there is the plan, basically fixing a tax rate for corporations that they already pay, if not less, um, imposing a net tax as a result of the border adjustment tax. So you're actually imposing a tax. You're not cutting it. By the way, there's no talk in here of, for example, uh, a reduction in the payroll tax or a, an elimination of the, that would be huge. Okay. Nor is there any talking here of, of a massive increase in spending, the, the, a trillion dollars outright new deficit spending, that would be huge. I would completely change my position around. So the stock market has rallied on this kind of fantasy in its head about this massive uh, stimulus and tax, bold, big, big, big tax plan, okay? Um, now in the fourth quarter, don't forget the economy grew 1.9% compared to 3.2% in the third quarter. So market's up 15%, but the economy slowed down. Okay, it slowed down. And now here's the main thing that I've been talking about. If you look at fiscal flows, which I admit, since December 28th, they flipped back to positive. They were growing nice. I was wrong about that. The flows were positive. They were supportive. But since uh, about the last week, a little bit more than the last week, last 10 days or so, those flows have flipped back to negative in a big way. We went from $32 billion spending above last year to now $35 billion spending below. That's nearly a $70 billion negative swing. And we know why that's happening or why that happened. That's because of these IRS tax refunds. Now that's going to eventually, you know, get back to normal. But in the meantime, people need that money. They depend on that money. February is a huge month for uh, federal spending. Last year, we did over $500 billion. People wait for those checks. And vendors and, and firms and businesses, they rely on the spending when people get that money. So that's not happening. All right. Now, that's not showing up in the data yet because I see these things day to day. You know, in the data every once every month, I'm way ahead of the curve on this. Now, just to sum up, there have been many, um, there have been many episodes, market episodes like this in the past, where uh, market behavior or investor behavior has kind of detached itself from reality. I think. I mean, clearly, one of those times has been in the dot com period, the late '90s to early 2000s, where people were running up the value of stocks and the stock market in general uh, on, on buying companies that literally had no value whatsoever. Companies written on a piece of paper, no value. It was a mania. All right. We saw this also 
uh, I would say in the housing bubble. This was not so much stock market related, but in you know 2005, four, five, six, seven, leading up to the crash, people buying and flipping houses, the value of real estate, you know, going way up. Uh, so we saw that mania play out there, and we saw how that ended. Okay, we also saw it in commodity markets. I saw this. I witnessed this in the crude oil uh, run up in. Uh, from 2004 to 2008, when it you know went from like 30 to 150, and it was probably overdone at 60 or 80, but it kept going to 150, and we know how that ended up too. They all end up the same way. They all end up the same way. So, I'm not saying that you know things are terrible or horrible or or that you know uh, we're going to have some kind of uh, implosion, but the stock market is ahead of itself. And investors are ahead of themselves. And there is no fundamental uh, basis behind this kind of market advance, which has been a one-way advance. It's not a healthy advance. A back-and-forth market action, like what we had last year, this kind of advance where people are skeptical the whole entire way, that is a healthy advance. And finally, I'll end off with one thing that I have been saying over and over. The largest longs in this market right now, if you look at the breakdown by the CFTC in terms of futures positions in the uh, S&P futures, those are institutional asset managers who have a long history of failing to outperform the market. And who's short? The dealers, the Goldmans, the Morgan Stanleys, the JP Morgans, they are short the market. And interestingly, speculators are short, leveraged money and small specs. But the institutional asset managers, they're not just long. They keep adding and adding and adding and adding week after week after week. So if you want to make a bet with the guys who have a long track record of not being able to beat the market, then be my guest. All right. Otherwise, anyway, that is my effort to put this into perspective. Um, let me hear your thoughts on this. See you later. Bye bye.